My wife was frightened. No, 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 no. I, I fought a black widow spider and you would be amazed how much more muscular they are than you would think. You would like to find out how she fought it? That's coming up next. But first, let's show a video. You're really taking this whole I'm not going to go no carb thing really, really seriously, aren't so, you? So Aaron said, oh, no carb, that'll be, and I went, oh, that, that doesn't seem low carb is problem. Good. Low carb is it's the easiest way to lose weight. It all is, I I'm wanna, sorry, that's always worked for me. All I want to do is stuff this in my pie hole, and this is discount bread. That's all I want to do is eat this bread in my face. You know, the sad part is, is Todd is so afraid of the low carb diet that he's actually lost weight trying to keep away from it. Now, I got to think that's kind of a win for him. But look, you can still have a lot of these things. I found some stuff. I found yeah. something. You just, right, have so, to, you just have to kind of work with it. So as opposed to going right now, you know, at night and getting in my car and driving to the Mad Greek and getting two euros. I think it was three last time. Mm. Euros. Um... I saw something online. Okay, so dill pickles. Um, dill pickle, you're going to make one for me. Mm -hmm. dill, look, random rice. Well, that's just taunting me now, right? I don't know where right? that came from. Carbs. Um, They're just showing up now. So I'm going to have you make one. And so this is basically um, uh, pickle submarine sandwiches. These are the small ones. When you get the big honking dill pickles. Oh, man. I've even looked for those in the deli and I couldn't find you any. They're creepy. They're so, like the size of your head. So many jokes have come to mind, but instead we're going with the small appetizer types. Um, and, you know, like... Uh, I don't think this is an appetizer type. That is a full-size dill pickle. That's not a meal when you're going carb-free. Oh, you're Excuse so me. bitter. Now, okay, so... Why is it that you hollowed okay, them out like a little one. boat? This is your job right here. Okay, why did you hollow them out like you they're a little boat? You take all the though? seeds out because... Why? Otherwise, there's... They're not even really seeds. It's too... Yes, it's cucumbers. Oh, honey, they're just part of the pickle now. Once it's pickled, it's just all a pickle. There's not really any seeds. Do you need help with this? No, you know, I'm actually doing fine, Mr. Cranky Pants. Man, you haven't even started dieting like you're pissy. How is this going to be like... Well, seriously, what are we going to be like on your fifth day, like, when you would, like, you would, like, sacrifice one of your children for a pizza? Do you what remember, are we going to do with you? Do you remember a honeymoon? Like that. That kind of anger. And, no wait, that wasn't our honeymoon. That was our anniversary. Our anniversary. No, that that's was the weeping. Was. That, that was the quiet, quiet. Yeah, honey. that was the quiet weeping. Okay, now. Okay, so, now, the simple thing is, is the fact that. Oh, you folded it over a little third. Oh, excuse me. Oh. oh. Season. So this really is going to act as the bread, including condiments. Yes. I mean, you're you're not going, you're not leaving anything out now. Like I said, with the big one, you can do tomatoes and all this stuff. So we're doing the the party appetizer. I like it. it's more like a canapé. Is that how you pronounce oh, it? Oh, can a canapé. Yes. Canapé. It's an hors d'oeuvre. Canapé. Okay. Um, so, okay. All right. So a little mustard. Mm-hmm. A little mayo. Okay. That was nicely done. By it was the way. beautifully done, I must say. All right. So a little all mustard. Right. Careful, the water will come out first. Mm. Uh, the funny noise. The embarrassing noise. Uh, and that unfortunate, I don't care. You we'll just pretend. No, I gotta eat this thing. That's a classic oh, shake. Oh, thank you. Okay, sorry. You know, actually, they figured out a way Heinz did now, how of are you? getting rid of the embarrassing noise, mm. and they decided not to. Because people enjoyed that as part of the sensory experience. Exactly. I see. Okay, All right, so, so we're gonna layer this with the standard. Pile, pile it up. Would you like a lot of this? Now, so far, you've got like zero carbs here. I know. If, unless you had a boatload of mustard. No, not even the mustard really has know, any, cal any carbs in it. Wait. I don't know what that has. Sriracha. Okay, good. Okay, I don't know how many carbs that has in it because it just looks creepy. Lots of lettuce? Yes. Okay. No, it doesn't have anything. Because, you know, as soon as I said carb-free, the, immediately th the thing I wanted was a bowl of rice. And evidently that's not right. Tortillas, no, that's not right. Now, are everything's doing? coming out. Do it over here, right here. Do it right here. Okay, everything wants to come out on me, though. Oh, God, what I feel like I'm killing wrong? something. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm trying to squish it down like you. Did you wash your hands? Yes. Okay, put it, put it up here. Nice. I think you done. did a lovely job. You did it. I think we did a lovely job. Okay. But so you laid it out in that pretty bring way. Me, bring me the other one. Oh, the ones you had time to make pretty so that mine looks like crap. 
All right, so. So. You feel like this is something that you could eat and you would not feel deprived. You feel like you could do the low carb with me now. Well, I think it's going to be too much dill, to be totally honest with you. You could slice the dill thinner. I think that the, the dill, the bigger the dill, the, the ooh. But we shall now try. But I want to try the one you made. Thank you, baby. Okay, so I'm going to put that over there. All right, so mm -hmm. I'm going to pull this out. Mm -hmm. Just because this one has mayo. You're so bitter. You ready? Right, you ready? One, two, three. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. What do you think? Two things. Mm -hmm. um, the guy from uh, Drivers, uh, Drive-Ins and Dives guy, mm -hmm. he just got his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame I saw today. Wow. It made me think about the food thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the hunching over and biting. Because he teaches you that. Oh, yeah. The weird way he holds sandwiches. I, I, I think it's kind of weird that he's on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Now, back to the food. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I digress. Um, Everything circles around food in the end, baby. Too much, di too much dill. I think it essentially tastes just like a sandwich without bread on it. Too much dill. I, I, don't, I, I don't think beggars can be choosers, honey. I'm, I'm not begging. Ow. I, how I tell. I have discount bread right here. You know, I'm going to put that under my bed. That's going to be sitting there. And I'll wake up in the morning with crumbs coming down my face. You're going to be like a raccoon in a dumpster, aren't you? Oh, well, I'm going to eat like a raccoon in a dumpster. Yeah. You're going to be a sleep eater. With a badger in there as well. Just banging around. Just, just eating the food. Um, I think it is a viable alternative. You can slice the dill thinner. Is. You have to slice the dill. Th uh -huh. yeah, yeah, definitely. Or you could just go get the slim mm -hmm. dill slices that are actually in the store this and not be true. required to but do that. But they're all slimy and gross on the outside. You need a real pickle. But on the way there, you stop at the Greek diner and you pick up the euros. There you go. Mission accomplished. I'm never going to get you on a diet, am I? I only have 30 pounds to lose until I can see my toes. That's what I said when I was eight months pregnant. <laughs> Except when mine came out. Mm. I'm cut off, aren't I? Mm. Yeah. Okay. How's that couch going to feel? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the pickle sandwich. I actually thought it was quite tasty. It's the last pick. Okay. We're done. No one likes a powder. <laughs> Don't say another word. <laughs> All right. All right, so go ahead and tell them you were downstairs cleaning up. Uh, open the back door, and mm -hmm. there was a black widow spider the size of, like, my fist clinging to the door. So I screamed and slammed it. Because I've never seen one before. And I went, okay, handle this calmly. Do what we always do. Pull out your dice and vacuum and suck it up with the wand. So I reached out, like, please don't let them jump. Sucked it up, and it makes like a meaty thunk when it goes down the tube. So I'm freaking out and I call Todd. I'm trying to be super calmly. Todd, come down here because our daughter is always obsessed with bugs and the first thing I can see is her jumping on this like a brother, like- Or finding Hi. another, right, right. Yeah, perfect. But you, but you had a certain belief that well, you said it was in the vacuum. Well, no, it was dead in the vacuum. Cause, Why? Because the suction of a Dyson is like blows their little lungs up and so they die instantly as you suck them up. But I said, would you please look at it, look at its belly, because I only saw the top and make so, sure it's a black widow, because if we have one, maybe we have more. So I took the container off, and I walked outside, and I put it on top of the barbecue. And I, I said, it's going to be dead, it. so just Some look lint. at it. You know. What's the lung exploding thing? Um, and sure enough, the lint started moving, and out he came. And she. he, it was she. big. How do you know? Did you look? 
black I widow at the, spiders uh, the are black all widow. female. Okay, no, no, let's go with that. The black widow spiders that are male don't have a red hourglass. They're just tiny. Now, wait a minute. Venomous. Before you say that to people watching, are you absolutely sure? I was required to watch a really Where's horrifying your phone? video Where's about your phone? a black widow spider no, mating with no. a male. And then they will show the whole mating thing, and then they show the poor guy, like, driven by instinct, and then afterwards, he's, like, trying to flee, and she's on him at, like like a duck on a jubile. Do black widow spiders, male, have red spots on them? Here's what I found. Here, start reading. Because you can't give bad information because somebody will grab no, one and it will this. bite them. Well, why would you even grab a male black widow And spider? what happens to you, by the way, if you get bit, it'll turn like purplish. It'll be burning. There'll be some numbing. And it's not, it's not, it's not fun. It's not like the amusement park. It's a bad thing. So please, look it up. Because I don't want to take a chance that we're like, oh, play with the black ones. It's okay. They don't have a red mark. They're fine. So anyway, let's move on. Um, uh, black widow spiders are notorious spider identified by the colored hourglass shaped mark on their abdomen. All of them? Well, that was my question though, because I don't. Think Does it say all of them? I'm gonna have to look this up more specifically because it's still loading. So I'll tell you in a minute. So if so it anyway, is black it's still alive. and it is shiny, don't touch it. Oh, so anyway, it's. You're using these two little sticks trying to turn it over, and I'm like, I did turn go it over. get a fireplace, set of fireplace tongs. Why are you using you, little sticks? You yeah. wanted me to light the house on fire. By the way, my wife has the vacuum, uh, can do anything. It, take care, it takes care of uh, fruit flies, uh, it takes care of black widow spiders, and next a raccoon. So there you go. No, All the, right. true, the true horror of this thing, though, is, is that it was m muscular. It took you, it fought you back when you were trying to squish it. It was like fighting back, like in a way you would think most spiders would just go, ah, and they would squish. No. Oh. Did you slightly have the heebie-jeebies? Don't lie to me. No. That was good. You didn't have the heebie-jeebies. Uh-uh. The black widow spider was fighting you back while you oh. attempted to down Oh, that's it. nice. Do that some more. Now you're just showing Stop off. Stop taunting me. We have to do a show. Uh, by the way, over the weekend, Utah won. Uh, the Utes did, and they are now the number one placed Pac-12 team. Top ten in the nation. I think so. Yeah, yeah, they're number ten, which is great. And I the the, the yeah, who did BYU crush? You that I don't that know, but they came back at the last moment and they took the game. And congratulations to them as well. By the way, you can get Papa Murphy's Pizza fifty percent off if BYU wins. I think all you have to do is text them. Uh, you can text uh, Papa Murphy's 50 and you get the 50% off on the Papa Murphy's pizza if they win. It's oh, a nice incentive. We would like an incentive as right? well. Right? Uh, emotional support animals. I think we've oh, seen them we all. Oh, here we go. Here we go. As a matter of fact, on our last flight, Todd and I had one uh, last flight that turned into a fight. Uh, and the woman had this horrible little yappy dog. It was a mixed breed and it was her comfort animal. So it was sitting on her lap and then it hopped down onto the it... aisle and pooped on the aisle. And left it there so that the flight attendant stepped into it, but she was comforted. Not the flight attendant, the lady behind us with the yak. We weren't. We weren't. But this one, I don't. We I, wish the masks had dropped down at that. Point. Really, this one, I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, Texan McBride Beatian lives in Missouri. She has three monkeys. They are all registered as emotional support animals to help her with her post-traumatic stress disorder. Three which, monkeys. Which we understand is a very debilitating situation it is we we get that part. now i will tell you though that if she came on the plane with three monkeys i would go no i'm getting off the plane now if i don't she think you're allowed monkeys anymore but the, but she, these i'm beginning to be on her side going through this because she's actually trained and worked with monkeys for 20 years and for whatever reason she bought it with these three monkeys but what happened is the neighborhood was not thrilled they saw the first monkey bound out of the house one day and her next door neighbor immediately called, <coughs> like the police and animal control, freaking out, going, monkeys give you hepatitis. I'm not sure that's true, but anyway, she said, no, no, they, they have their shots. They have inoculations. And so this has ended up in front of the city council. It's gone like three or four or five, six, seven times. Um, she says, my monkeys will not hurt anyone. I've even got a note from my doctor who prescribed the monkeys as emotional support animals. Three monkeys. 
I just There's thought a lot of, of monkeys you for know, a residential neighborhood. <clears throat> you know what they allow on planes is miniature horses. Okay. okay. No, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. So if they allow miniature horses, and they allowed a monkey riding the horse, oh. how awesome would that be? See, that's like a show. That's better than an in-flight movie. And it's it's show and a dinner and a show. Bad dinner. Horrible dinner. Peanuts in the But show. the show makes up for everything. Yeah, this is true. Um, okay, tell about the event that. coming up, November oh, 9th. Wow, now this is Women of Worth. You can go to wowutah.org to learn more about this. Here, you tell, I've had I'm a chance gonna, to right talk to some of these women, and it's been absolutely incredible because, first, uh, these are women who have been brought out of peril in unimaginable situations. Um, there was a one beautiful woman I talked to who had been so. In, well, more or less sold into polygamy when she was 14 years old. And by the time I met her, she was a vibrant 25 year old and she had kids and she had a job and a house and, and everything had changed. But the thing that's crucial about WOW is, is that not only do they rescue women from terrifying situations, abusive situations, isolating experiences, but then they give them a mentor and they help them walk through this next stage of life. Because if you've been through this level of trauma, you're not always jumping right back on your feet. So these women help them get places to stay. They work with their kids. They make sure they're in school. They talk to the mom. They start a career and discuss what you can do and what your skills are. And so what you end up with is not only a woman who's been, who's been rescued, but she's no longer a victim. She's a hero. She's an advocate. She's someone that you can look up to. And now, November 9th, let me say this. It's going to be a really fun night. They're going to talk about a lot of great stories. Ketchy from uh, America's Got Talent is going to be singing there. You have a chance to do a one-on-one -on -one with her. Well, she's a story of survival. If right? you remember, 2005 airplane crash, one of two survivors, severe burns, uh, 100 surgeries to get her back together enough. She goes on America's Best Talent. Simon just freaks out about her, hits the button. She's in the finals. She's going to be there on November 9th. So it's an incredibly inspiring <clears throat> evening, but you buying a table, you buying tickets to come is such an important experience. And when you meet these women, you're going to be incredibly inspired. And they're also looking for people who would like to sign up to be a mentor to, to one of these women and, and help her bring back into the light, which I think is so beautiful. So you can go to wowutah.org. Um, if you're buying the tickets, do make sure you mention Todd and Aaron. There is a fairly substantial discount. Coffee, tea, or wasn't there a third thing? Well, in the flight attendant book, it's coffee, tea, or me. But that's... That was like in the 70s. It was really okay. different back then. Well, someone on the plane wanted a coffee, and they brought it to that person. This happened to be a he in this case. Has over 30,000 fly miles. I mean, this guy... He's been really, around. He really knows. Now, we know in radio that open drinks usually aren't allowed around the... The board. Yeah, there's a lot of lights blinking and things going up and well, down. Well, he spilt his coffee, and this was on the audio control panel. Now, smoke started to come out. This is a pilot? This is a pilot with 325 people on board, and they're in mid-flight. And so it started smoking. It got so hot that one of the buttons actually melted. They actually, there was so much smoke in the cockpit, they actually had to put their oxygen on. And then he had to make the call to the tower saying, we, we have to divert. And they actually had to land the plane somewhere else because he spilled coffee in the cockpit. They had an emergency landing because of a cup of coffee. I'm thinking a caffeine peel next time. No judgment. Just... I, s s meth, something. <laughs> this is crazy. They had to change the route and land for an emergency because... He spilled coffee on his dim. That's good. I have a, I have a thing from Wyoming for you. This now, is a lot be of tragic, times, isn't a it? lot of times we have deer who live across the street. Good neighbors, except they ate all my tomato plants. But otherwise, I look at them as a food source. So anyway, in Wyoming, um, they had this issue, and this happens quite a bit. Um, an animal with antlers sometimes gets tangled up in hammocks oh and they've seen it with like playground swings and stuff they're, it's well, awful they're webs yeah, and they get their yeah. antlers through and then they freak out and then they're going crazy and a moose did this in wyoming and so the police oh. show up and they go we're not touching this thing because it's gone crazy but it can't get loose i can't blame that poor little thing division of wildlife resources shows up you know and one of the guys looks at the calendar and he goes 
calendar on his watch, perhaps, I'm not sure. Uh, and he realizes that it is close to hunting season. Oh, dear. So, he says, we can't trank the moose because it would not be able to be harvested and eaten by humans once we set it loose, if it is taken in the hunt. Well, why bother to rescue them? Why don't you just put them out of his misery? That seems kind of awful. We'd like you to live so we can go and shoot you later. Isn't there another option? And there is. Is there another they option? They tased him. They tased him. The police him. pulled out a taser. Tased him in the butt. And the moose dropped. And when he dropped, all the poli all the, the Department of Wildlife Resources guy got their knives out because they always carry knives. And they ran in and they cut the thing loose. And then they detased him. Just little barbs. And they pulled him out of his butt. And the moose stood up and trotted off and was happy. Hopefully to escape the hunt. This All I can fall. think of is that fork in San Diego going, Quit tasing me, bro. <laughs> don't, Quit tasing don't me, bro. Tase me. Anyway. The other, you know, the other moose are standing around going, Could I have your badge number? <laughs> don't worry, I got it on video. Uh, you guys have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow on the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. Don't forget to go get your tickets at wowutah.org for the gala in November. It's going to be amazing.